Good morning to all of you. The principal of the college, Professor Raji, Father Raji Kurian, our distinguished speaker today, Vikalki Subramanya, vice principal of the college, Dr. Joseph George, Dr. Thomas, and all the distinguished there. Uh, experts who is going to deliver lectures today and I'm my dear participants I could see more than 172 participants for this meeting as a vice chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University I'm extremely delighted to tell you that St. Berkman's College is one of our best autonomous under Mahatma Gandhi University and I'm glad that you have organized a series of programs as part of your centenary celebrations. And this is actually the second series of program as part of the centenary celebration. I really like the topic, transgender lives, issues, challenges, and future directions. And you have a fantastic panel of experts to deliver lectures. I extend a very warm welcome to our distinguished speaker, Madam Alki Subramanian. When you look at sexuality and gender, sexuality is always related to biology. You, have, you can define sexuality based on biological perspective. But if you look at gender, gender we have to see in a different angle. I would say it's more of sociological, more of cultural. Today's society, if you look at lesbian people, gay people, bisexual people, transgenders, they suffer a lot. They have a lot of challenges. If you look at the Western society, because Mahatma Gandhi University interacts with a large number of universities across the globe, in Europe, in the United States, in Africa, if you look at the Western society, they have made a lot of advancements. Accepting lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender in the mainstream of their life. If you look at the uh, transgender issues. Transgenders suffer a lot. They are discriminated. They are often harassed. They are victimized. They are segregated from the mainstream. And if you look at health, you know, the, if you look at the health sector, they are actually denied the particularly enlistment in a medical coverage because of their gender identity. And you can see a lot of violence against them. So these issues have to be discussed in detail. And we have to build up a great public awareness. Of course, if, if you look at the recent uh, uh, legal battle, I'm sure that a lot of legal victories they have. But that's not enough. Society need to understand this. Society need to take precautionary measures, support them. If you look at the uh, transgenders, transgenders have gender identity that does not match their assigned sex, often resulting in gender dysphoria. And I'm sure that this online meeting discusses, go, going to discuss lots of issues, going to discuss health issues of transgenders, the economic issues of transgenders, you know, they have poverty, they have unemployment, they have discrimination in the education sector. I remember in some of the colleges, I had to really talk to the principal to give them admission. 
although they were meritorious. And there were there are a lot of safety issues. There are a lot of civic rights issues. I hope all these points will be discussed in this important conference. I congratulate the principal, congratulate the faculty members in organizing such a wonderful uh, meeting, a great team. And I'm sure that this conference will be very, very useful for our academic community. If you look at the initiative taken by my university, Mahatma Gandhi University has reserved two seats per program. All the courses run in affiliated institutions of our university. Two seats have been reserved for transgender community. We have separate sports cultural events for transgenders because we need to have their participation. Most of the items you have for the males and females, but we have found this problem and we have introduced their quota. So there we have a transgender quota for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, sports. We organize periodic conferences, seminars and workshops on transgender issues. Probably some of you must have heard in the paper that we have a separate school of transgender studies. We initiated. And one of my, I mean, uh, female professor is heading the center. And we were the first university in the state of Kerala. We have given a separate provision for entering gender in application forms for the students. When they enter into the university or enter into a college, they have to fill up a form. There usually used to have only male and female, but we have introduced transgender also in that category. And I want all the campuses and colleges should be transgender friendly. I have written to all the principals of the colleges that your college should be transgender friendly. So these are the initiatives taken by Mahatma Gandhi University. And I'm sure that this conference will, this workshop, this online meeting will discuss a large number of issues. Therefore, the, lie, the, 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 the conditions of transgenders could be improved. A great public awareness could be generated. And that would be extremely useful to have a balanced society, holistic society, where we always talk about inclusive education. Personally, I like conferences and meetings and seminars. When you attend a conference, you really understand the latest advancements. My own subject, nanoscience, polymer science, we organize at least four or five international meetings in a year. When you organize meetings, you meet leaders in the field. I remember my great collaborator in, uh, uh, in MIT. He says he always go for the American Chemical Society meeting, ACS meeting in nanoscience. And Robert always tell me, if you go for na a nanoscience meeting, a very American Chemical Society conferences, you understand the latest advancements. Therefore, conferences, workshops, give you lots of opportunity to understand the latest advancements in the subject. You meet the leaders in the field. You can make network. Therefore, I request all the participants to be extremely active interact with speakers like uh, uh, Madam Talki Subramanian, understand the, the core of the issue. And this is the only way we can solve some of the issues being faced by our good friends, transgenders. With all your permission, I declare that the online talk series entitled Transgender lives, issues, challenges, and future directions has been inaugurated. And I wish all the best for the online meeting. Thank you so much. And I wish that SP College will organize a series of meetings as part of the their Saturday celebrations. Thank you, Father. Very much for that um, lovely introduction. Um, First of all, uh, I would like to actually thank uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of MG University for uh, 
everything he has done for the transgender community in his academic uh, uh, being the university vice chancellor, of course. And uh, thank you so much for having me in this great event on a very important day. Today is May 17, which is the International Day Against uh, Transphobia, Homophobia, and Biphobia. And uh, dear Vice Chancellor, dear Principal, dear Professors, dear dignitaries, lecturers, coordinators, students, and audience, everyone, a very good, good morning. Thank you so much for uh, uh, putting across your time uh, for listening to the stories and listening to the existence of uh, transgender lives in this country, in this planet, and especially in our Indian society. In, um, I hope you are all safe and well. Uh, I hope so. And today um, is actually not a day to celebrate. It's actually a day to observe, a day to awaken, a day to be more sensitive and sensible on gender, sexuality, and sex. Of course, in an Indian society, which is contemporarily, which is currently a patriarchal society, uh, we do have gender imbalances. Obviously, we do have gender imbalances. Not all the sexes, genders of people are treated as equal. We all know that. That itself has been a very big setback for the social and economic, as well as I would definitely say for the religious growth, uh, spiritual growth, intellectual growth of our community, our country. I sincerely believe that a society that respects its women will definitely respect its non-binary and transgender people too. In, the, in my 13 years of activism, I've come across so many experiences. I remember in 2007, when I first stepped into Kerala, uh, I think that was in Faru College, Kori Court. All the students, I, I was invited for a sociology department event. All the students who attended <clears throat> actually looked at me as if I was an alien. And even the people from other departments, they used to rush people in the window to look at me. Uh, maybe because previously they have never, never seen a trans woman or they have never listened to a trans woman. Uh, in a few months, along with a group of my own team from Sahodri Foundation, we went to uh, Kote to speak at two, uh, events. I remember in that, uh, uh, when we just, after the event was over, when our team decided to go to Kumaru home, we got into a, uh, we went to the bus station and hundreds of men were surrounding us, making passes, comments at us. We were terrified. And then for, uh, thankfully the bus came and we got into the bus. Even then there was so much people were staring at us. And uh, from that period to this period, in 13 years, we have done so many ch changes. I must thank really the academic community, all the universities of Kerala, the media of Kerala, the intellectuals of Kerala, the artists and writers and poets of Kerala, the students who were studying 10 years before and who are now in their different jobs and uh, professions. I must thank them all because it's not only because of activists like us, we have changed the scene of phobia to friendliness. We have also, uh, you have also, the academic institutions, the media, the students, professors, everyone, the policymakers, government, of course. 
there is a collective uh, effort that has resulted today in so many of the developments that we see today. Especially I know Kerala has been a very transphobic, homophobic state. And to some extent, it still is. Because I know that for a fact in India, even though uh, in 2014, the Supreme Court of India legally recognized it, transgender communities, civil rights and legal rights. In uh, 2018, the, uh, the Supreme Court again decriminalized section 377, which penalized homosexuality. Still in our country, trans people are excluded in the family system. Trans people are, a trans people's family is not recognized by the society and not even by the law, of course. There are so many hurdles we face today in spite of all the, I mean, we do celebrate our, our identity. I am proud of being a trans woman and so are my friends. We celebrate our identity. And that is during the Pride Month. That is in June, all over the world. June is the Pride Month, that is next month is the Pride Month, where we celebrate um, who we are, celebrate our identities, our families, celebrate our friends, celebrate LGBT community. But a day like May 17th or November 21st, which is the Transgender Day of Remembrance, which is a day where we actually remember our dead ones. These are also very, very important days, particularly May 17th is, a day, is, is not a day for transgender people. It's a day for the society to be more aware and sensible that being, it's okay to be a transgender. It's okay to be a homosexual. It's okay to be gay, lesbian, bisexual, or non-binary. That kind of an awareness is not just awareness. It's a knowledge. It is an education. It is, it is what is future. I believe that the future is non-binary. Because slowly we are, we are breaking gender, we are breaking the no, supposed normalcy of gender binary codes. We are breaking this system in every, across everywhere, right from fashion to films and art and everywhere we are changing that. And people who never listen to people and corporates and media and, you know, who never listen to trans and LGBT people are now wanting to listen to us, which I think is a very important sign. I always am happy to talk to students because 10 years ago, I spoke to hundreds and thousands of students in Kerala. And today an entire generation has changed Kerala from being a terri terri terribly transphobic and fearful state it has become a trans-friendly state. I, I very well remember in 2007, not even one transgender person could actually wear a sari and walk in Kerala. Today, trans people don't run away from Kerala. Maybe they run away from their families, but they don't run away from the state because the family is still excluding, but the state is becoming inclusive, becoming inclusive. I'm saying there are these initiatives like the gender park, which are, which in Kurikur, in, in Calicut, of course, are changing the perspective of gender. Gender park is not only about the gender of trans people and about uh, women or men. It's about the inclusiveness of all genders. It's about everyone. It's about uh, the uh, inclusing, inclusiveness of all gender identities. So especially in our country, trans people have existed forever. Look at the Mahabharata, Ramayana, the references of gender swapping, sex swapping. Look at how uh, we have characters like uh, Shikandi in Mahabharata and Brahanalla, who was a transgender, Arjuna becoming Brahanalla because of curse and serving in the palace. Arjuna was not 
begging or doing sex work. Arjuna was a dance teacher. Arjuna was an art teacher in a royal palace. And even in the Mughal, Mughal era of India, trans people were certainly respected. In Hyderabad, we still have a Haveli, a, 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 a palace that was dedicated to transgender community. It is only a level of the British 200 and something years before that the British brought their Victorian morality and religious bigotry into our country. And because of that, our, our expansion of uh, our ideas of our gender and sexuality and our uh, ideas of diversity and our knowledge on diversity became compact and compact and today it's so small. We feel it's a sin to be a trans people. It's, we feel it's a sin to be a homosexual or gay or lesbian. The idea does not come from our country. The idea actually comes from the Victorian principles, the Victorian morality that came from Europe, especially the British during our colonial era. The decline of the transgender community in our, uh, in our country especially happened after the British introduced their Criminal Tribes Act of 1871 and later it was changed again and again. For over 200 years, the Criminal Tribes Act has degraded, demolished, and derailed our transgender community, along with a lot of other communities like the gypsies. 30, more than 33 communities of people were listed as uh, criminal tribes, along with the uh, street dancers and gypsies, trans people were also. So it means that criminal tribes, you're born as a criminal. That's what it says. It took more than two centuries to actually uh, break that, uh, scrap that law, scrap that act. But the damage was already done. The damage was already done, of course. Even today, we have untouchability, we have uh, uh, gender phobia, we have transphobia, homophobia, biphobia, and our idea of gender is so narrow and tiny. But we are also hypocrites because we worship Ardhanari Ishwara. We read the scripts on, uh, we say Andahan in Tamil, about trans people who were eunuchs uh, in the Bible, of course. Those references have always existed, but it's just that our own uh, conditioned and programmed mind has uh, kept us in a wheel of stupidity and foolishness and uh, uh, lack of knowledge, I would say. So it is important for all of us, especially in, in our generation, to just accept people as they are. I mean, what they do in their bedrooms is none of our business. To whom with with whom they are in their bedroom is none of our business. Who is their partner and what dress they, what are the, I mean, how they feel or how they dress up is none of our business. We are not cultural police and nobody can be a cultural police. Not even the police can become, can be a cultural police. So as I said, um, being a trans ally is important than just being trans friendly. When you see a transgender person being beaten or a gay person being beaten, what, what we are asking is for, from you is not just don't beat us, but from you, don't be a spectator. Don't be a spectator when a trans or a gay person is beaten up, is ridiculed, is bullied voice for them, 
be with them, support them. Be with the community. That is, that is so, so important. That is what makes an ally. There are also a lot of other things that is so important. You need to be very sensitive when talking about uh, trans people. For example, there is a group of uh, uh, there is a group of people sitting in a conference or anything like that. Okay, a meeting, group of meeting, that might include some non-binary and trans people too. So you can instead of calling uh, that transgender person or that transgender woman, you can say that person in the blue shirt, that person or that lady in a blue shirt, something like that. You know, not like that transgender, this person, because being gay or a trans is not identity. What is the identity of a person? Being a professor, being an artist, being a farmer, being a scientist, being a cook, being a home manager. These could be our identities. Being a woman is our biological identity. It's not your social identity. But many people think being a transgender or gay is a social identity. It is not so. It is what it is. We need to think beyond just, we need to think people just beyond their sexuality and gender. Um, I, a few days ago, I, I um, here is Kalki, she is a transgender, but that is not me. <laughs> that is, I'm not just Kalki, I, I'm not just uh, transgender. That is one of hundreds of in identities I have, and I'm least bothered that I'm trans. I am an activist, I am an artist, I have acted in films, I'm an actor, I'm a performing artist, and I'm a poet, writer. I'm a traveler as well. So these are the majority identities I celebrate within myself. My trans identity is also something I celebrate, but that is just one of my born identity. I'm born this way and it's okay to be this way because you are all this way and it's okay to be who you are. Same way, it's okay to me, it's okay for me to be who I am. It's that simple. So also when you meet a transgender person, never say like, for example, I've seen many people uh, speak to me, oh, Kal Okay, you're so beautiful. You like you look like a real you, but you're a transgender. Also, to my trans uh, men friends, they say, "Oh, Ruben, hey, you actually are transgender man, right? You look so much like a man. You've got all your mustache and beard and everything. I can't identify. Nobody will say you're a transgender. You might think that it's a compliment, but this is all offensive language." because we are not, they are not just trans men, they are men. And we are not just transgender or trans women. We are women. We feel as women and we want our sexuality and gender identity to be not complimented, just to be accepted, that's all. So on this day of uh, uh, trans, uh, international day of, uh, international day of, uh, International Day Against Transphobia, Homophobia, and uh, Biphobia. We need to be aware that in 10 years from today, if your children or their children, or if your friend's children or anybody, if your neighbor, if your sister, if your, if your own son or a daughter is a trans or gay, please don't hate them. Please don't throw away from them. Throw away them. Look at all the people in Kerala, trans people, many of them are doing sex work, standing in traffic signals and everywhere and doing sex work. You know that. Do you think it is something they love to do? No. 
many of them have been abandoned by chose to walk away from their families because they couldn't live with their families. We need to change that. And that is possible only by includes, including them in our families. When they are at home, they don't have to go for begging. Instead, they will be studying or working or even taking care of home, taking care of the home or even taking care of someone sick at home. Whatever it is, it's important that we don't throw our, our, our uh, gay, bisexual, lesbian, transgender, sons and daughters and friends and family away, which is the most important thing that as students and young people, you should remember that trans lives matter, gay lives matter, lesbian lives matter, all lives matter, LGBT lives matter. That is what I expect from you on this day. Make sure that you're not just trans friendly, but be a trans ally. At Sahodri Foundation, we actually do a lot of uh, projects with our uh, transgender community, especially many of them are not educated, not, uh, uh, not able to pursue their academic uh, dreams. So for them, especially, we have uh, invited them and we offer free workshops in art and craft. And uh, it's a livelihood uh, option as well. And then we, it's called Trans Hearts Project. And then we have the Red Wall Project through which we document the testimonials of trans people, encourage them to write about the vulnerable and abusive experiences that they have gone through. We document all that. And we encourage them to speak about it. Because speaking about the experiences that you had is so important for your mental health, especially the abuse, if anybody abuses you, please speak. It's so important. Speak to someone, seek help and all that. So that is how it is. Be an ally, be a trans ally, be a gay ally, be trans friendly, be gay friendly. And that is the future. Because in a few years, probably in five years, you would see trans people act, not only acting in films, we'll be making. I mean, we already have a pilot. There'll be more ad hostesses from trans people in 10 years. Trans people will be across everywhere. They would be working in media, they'll be teaching at the universities, they would be doing everything and they would be part of the society. They have to be a part of the society. And that is possible only via trans allies. Follow me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Kalki Art and I'm on Instagram as uh, Queen Kalki, instagram.com slash Queen Kalki. And please visit our website, sahodri.org. Thank you everyone. Thank you, sir, for, uh, thank you to SP uh, College for, uh, inviting me for this uh, session in which I am able to uh, share my ideas and thoughts on this very important day, the International Day Against Transphobia, Homophobia, and Biophobia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Madam, for that truly insightful talk. We can, we can have a short interactive session now. Participants can leave your comments and questions in the chat box. They will be taken up for discussion by the panel. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for that uh, truly amazing uh, words. Uh, here is a question by, uh, I think I'm audible. Hello? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, uh, there is a question by Vimal Mohan. It goes like this. Although there are references to the trans culture in epics and other religious texts, aren't they somewhat exclusionary? In the Hindu epics, for instance, isn't falling out of the gender binary considered to be some sort of a punishment? That's the question. Uh, yes. But also we have the, we also have the images of oneness, right? Adhanarishwara and all that too. So 
to a certain extent that like for example shikandi not shikandi brahanalla was the curse of course being at uh, urvashi actually i think ramba i think so i'm not sure where who menaka or urvashi she actually causes uh, arjuna and he becomes a transgender and he works in the palace if you interpret it that way that uh, it is not really uh, inclusive or uh, it is a punishment to trans people or the gender swapping is a punishment then it is so but i am merely talking about their references and their survival during the period they were not outright thrown away by the society ex which existed then they were not ridiculed that is what i meant when i say yes they were it was considered not so good but i believe that the exclusion was minimal okay so can i move to the next question ma'am it's a question from deepa uh, kailasam the question goes like this uh what can be done in schools and primary school uh, primary education to enable children to understand gender diversity at the beginning of their lives so that they grow up with the ideas and information about the gender spectrum and be people of empathy and compassion i think uh, i've always insisted uh, am i audible yeah yeah certain I mean, one of the ways that we should include, uh, we should educate our generations of people, especially our children, is like including education on gender and sexuality at school, at school level itself. I'm not so sure if you could actually include it in primary education. Maybe in a language that they understand, we can definitely teach children on gender identity. Uh, on the existence of different gender identity in their own language because children usually learn about uh, gender roles only in their primary education of course it's not like mother cooks in the kitchen and father goes out for work that's what we have read so if children are fed with the same kind of uh, patriarchal ideas it's not good so maybe in a language that children understand we can teach them about gender equality it may not exactly be about trans identities but we can teach children that beyond men and women there are people who needs to be respected and that should be in a language that the children understand and when we talk about education for the uh, secondary and higher secondary and college of course it's important i've always said that uh, educating our people on gender and sexuality is of such such importance that uh, there should be educational curriculum included in uh, in our uh, education system there should be policy about that yeah ma'am uh, in connection to that question what about the role of the family because is one of the primary uh, social institutions and do you think that what went wrong with our family what what's your idea or comment on this with our families a lot of things are wrong of course the way we treat our women are wrong the way we treat our daughters are wrong the way we treat our non binary and trans kids and gay kids and um masculine boys and i mean masculine girls and feminine boys is wrong so that is why educating our families is also a very important aspect but a very big challenge uh, i would say that i concentrate not on educating the families but i concentrate on educating the next generation because uh, it's important to sensitize our families and that sensitization just doesn't take my own effort it's a collective effort the images of trans people in the media in films in television in newspapers and how it is all uh, presented is it presented truthfully or in a very derogatory manner is so important because our families see 
if some trans person is called chakka or whatever it is or uh, chandabudu or whatever it doesn't go it, it damages our personality it damages our identity so what do you project project truthfully is important when it is projected wrong families feel ashamed of trans persons families feel ashamed of people who the media projects as shameful and that directly reflects on the families so it is the it is it's a collective effort that the family just mirrors what the society says when the society changes our family changes and that social change comes only through awareness and education okay ma'am the next question goes like this what is the role of beautification in transsexual expression how does a transgender person quell their desire of conforming to their desired self image how can the self image empower a non trans women can trans women empower non trans women through their struggles can they find common ground it is by tania george morris okay um you might have seen a lot of trans people actually are wearing so much of makeup and um excessive makeup if if that is the word uh if we could use that excessive makeup according to current standards is excessive makeup or lipstick and all these gorgeous uh, shiny dresses if you ever wonder why do they do it overdo it i think that they are not overdoing it they are rather celebrating their identity we are rather celebrating our identities because for a large period of our lives we have been oppressed by our families to express our uh, gender and when we have a uh, opportunity to exp express our gender identity our gender expression it explodes it explodes in colors it explodes in pink and shining red and yellow and all that and that is how you see trans people that with the excess of makeup and all that many of us don't even follow fashion what we do is our own fashion and that is how that is one thing women should learn that you should create your own fashion you should never follow what is currently fashionable uh, you should you should dress up like what do you desire what you what makes you happy if this uh top that i wear definitely makes me happy i'm wearing it because it makes me happy not because it it impresses someone or uh someone is happy that i wear it and that is one thing that women should learn that you live your life not to impress up others but for your own being a woman is not to impress others it's it's to celebrate yourself Yeah, for trans people, that's it. We celebrate ourselves. So, uh, ma'am, can I go to the next question? Do we have time? Yes, please. Uh, okay. I could take around the three more questions. Okay. Then, then the next question is: uh, For a transgender person, is it necessary to uh, transition to the physical appearance of gender identity you identify, or is it gener? Uh, maybe he is asking about uh, social transitioning, right? uh is it necessary yeah. that's the question uh, not necessary not necessarily for every individual it's different for me it was important that i do a surgery and i completely change transform myself for me it was important that i have breast for me it was important that i remove my penis but for for my friend sandhya it's she also did a surgery but for her it was not important that she grow her breasts similarly i have another friend abhinay it was not important for her to have surgery but we are all trans women so for it it also depends sometimes on your physical condition your health condition so really it's somebody's own decision and somebody's own gender expression of how comfortable they are with their own bodies uh, that the transition can happen in any various degrees
Okay. Uh, the next one is actually a request for a comment on the on the condition of transgender uh, people during this pandemic times. How are they doing to, to the uh, going through these pandemic times? That's a question. So it becomes important that uh, every person is different from the other. Their uh, expression could be different from the other. Um, transitioning is one so on desire and it's influenced by their environment, family, health, 